My um, final contribution here is uh, um, yeah, um, one that um, sort of takes from all the things that we've discussed here um, the, uh, the elements that will um, be um, relatively new, different, but not too much uh, in comparison with what we uh, did last year's. Uh, but of course, everything starts from what we have. So um, there will be continued efforts to, to improve the infrastructure. And just a few hours ago, Dieter gave a very dense and uh, very um, a comprehensive overview of things going on, things that have happened, things that will happen. Um, so I don't think I have to go in, into any more detail there. Um, of course, um, uh, Daria's presentation um, shows that there are many, many ideas to uh, reinforce the focus on user involvement that we started last year. Um, but I would like to go in a bit more detail now about um, uh, the workshops as new instruments for uh, collaboration, the partnerships um, that Claren is uh, maintaining, the impact of our European projects on the, the Clarin value proposition and the impact of the European policies on the way we uh, see our strategy. Um, we are currently uh, maintaining links with many research infrastructural uh, initiatives, um, but uh, for a long time we've been looking for ways to intensify some of them, and we're about to, to do that. Uh, and in particular, the, uh, we have now uh, identified uh, several uh, topics that have a big potential for synergy in, in the collaboration with DARIA, and this has been um, part of discussions with the board of DARIA, and we will uh, intensify that in the next year. So one topic, it was also mentioned, uh, I think, in Bente's presentation yesterday, is there will be collaboration uh, uh, on, on course redevelopment, collaboration um, uh, on the furthering of an existing uh, course registry. There will be uh, collaboration in the context of partners. This is one of these uh, uh, bigger European projects that we are involved in. This is a cluster project. Uh, and there will be, um, um, we will make an attempt to, to develop a joint perspective on standards because we partly serve uh, the same community, so it would be good if the standards that, that we um, apply in our work uh, are uh, the same or similar where it is possible. So this is a few topics where we will try to intensify uh, the collaboration with, with Daria in order to serve the user communities uh, better and to avoid any duplication in, in discussion and work. Um, we're also targeting uh, a more intense collaboration with the social sciences and the humanities. And for that purpose, the collaboration with SESDA um, uh, will become more and more important. I think we have a representative of SESDA here in the audience, like we had many people here that have one or two uh, feet in, in uh, the program of DARIA. Um, so I hope this is the starting point of uh, a more intense collaboration. Um, another important thing that will only take place in a little bit more than two years, three years time, but that um, may be an important incentive for uh, intensifying collaboration with, uh, um, with all kinds of research, smaller and bigger research infrastructures in, in the digital humanities is the fact that the edition of 2019, so the next one that will take place in Europe, will take place in Utrecht. Um, Utrecht will be the host, Utrecht University, uh, has invited Clarin to participate in the preparations. So um, we will be able to, to monitor what's going on there, but also to, to organize things that we think um, uh, are important from the perspective of our strategy that would fit in the, in the framework of that conference. Um, as soon as the ideas have developed a bit more further, we will update you and uh, see how that can um, deliver um, results and, and increased synergy for uh, things going on in our communities and the communities that we serve. And then there is an initiative by the uh, ERIC 
research infrastructures. Uh, all the ERICs in, in Europe uh, um, have uh, now quite informal way of, of collaborating and communicating and exchanging be best practices. But there is an initiative to intensify that and to uh, be able to better benefit from uh, what we can learn from each other. Um, so here too, uh, I think we will um, uh, have a much more um, informed um, uh, basis for uh, uh, reusing practices, uh, also in a very uh, down-to-earth manner, for example, how you arrange employment issues, etc. So this is a, a, a very good opportunity to um, to become uh, to yeah to to improve as an organization by learning from others, and of course the other way around. Okay, then um, the international perspective. Um, we are aware of several opportunities to collaborate with more remote uh, uh, parties that uh, do things that are somehow relevant or similar to what, what Clary is doing. Uh, in several of the talks, uh, you saw that there are strong links with uh, work going on in the United States, both at the institutional level in several countries, uh, but also at the central level. And we foresee that this will become uh, something a bit more impact in the near future. Um, as already mentioned, uh, South Africa is now ready for really um, getting off with uh, um, a digital infrastructure for language resources. And um, as explained, uh, we are exploring the possibilities uh, for South Africa to join Clarin as a member or an observer. And there are contacts, and you know, uh, you all, um, represent uh, a large body of knowledge about that with, with countries like China and Japan, and we will explore the possibilities to turn that into a more structural collaboration. Oops. Yeah. Then um, I would like to say a few more words on um, the workshops uh, that we have introduced as an instrument to um, stimulate collaboration across uh, the, the members uh, in Clarin, the member countries. Um, uh, the call for proposals was launched uh, uh, earlier this year and, and recently, as, as reported yesterday, we um, uh, approved um, four initiatives and all of them share uh, this feature that they are grassroots initiatives. The, the, they are building on existing strengths, uh, building on uh, existing ambitions and, and uh, available technology, but are now going to share that with other countries and uh, for very specific uh, topics and um, in, in that way contribute to Clarence's uh, strategic priorities um, and then with uh, a specific attention for the user involvement uh, aspects of the agenda. Uh, there is a lot of potential uh, for synergy uh, between countries and this is an instrument to identify those places where we can uh, have very quick wins and, and uh, um, improve the existing infrastructure with the results of those workshops. Because there will be support for follow-up development tracks. Um, and also, it has turned out already that uh, this instrument is a very good way of uh, taking up agendas that, that come from, uh, from other workshops and um, activities. Um, as we think, of course, it still has to be evaluated, and it can only be done um, once the workshops have been taken have have uh, yeah, have taken place and and the follow up actions have have been uh, monitored. But uh, um, we trust that this will be a good instrument, and therefore we have decided that there will be a new call soon. So, um, in case you're not uh, subscribed to the Clarion newsletter, I think it's a good idea to do that because then you will see the call. Um, later this year. Um, another interesting uh, topic to, to address shortly is the fact that we maintain collaborations with um, those initiatives and organizations that are uh, called e-infrastructures. Um, as you know, we have a uh, continued collaboration and, and we will continue the collaboration the com and the communication with organizations like RDA, EU.GN, EGI, and Open Air. We also um, have the aim to have a more intense collaboration with libraries because they 
uh, are part of the infrastructure for research is anyhow, so uh, it would be good to uh, explore ways to have a, a more, create more synergy uh, from the Claren infrastructure and the things that are on offer at the libraries. And, and for this purpose, we will start collaborating, uh, first of all, communicating uh, more intensely with, with LIBER, which is the organization for research, um, that, for libraries from the research universities. And um, Ariana, um, we, we also have the collaboration with Europeana that we will continue. Um, in this context, uh, it is good to, um, to underline that um, if you want to be understood by, uh, by those organizations, um, um, it's good to point to uh, what makes the social sciences and the humanities special. And uh, in those communities, there is often talk about um, the long tail, and often that uh, relates only to the long tail of data. Um, as you know, organizations like CERN and, and uh, other um, um, organizations that run um, expensive or let's call huge instruments to, to make observations for um, uh, climate change, uh, uh, microscopes, etc. Uh, they collect um, volumes of data that are incomparable to, to what we are talking about. So often the social sciences and the humanities are seen as uh, uh, somewhere in this tail of data. But of course, if you really want to uh, ask attention for what makes us different from, um, from the more generic uh, or, or the, the bigger research infrastructures in terms of data volume, you should also look into um, uh, the fact that we have a, a user community that is um, um, more spread across disciplines, uh, and the same applies to m maybe to our tools. And we should also not forget about the methodologies, because existing methodologies uh, will never uh, become irrelevant because there is uh, uh, digital technology on offer. The, the, the methodological frameworks uh, uh, of, um, of scholars will always be the starting point for their uh, uh, ability and um, and, and desire to, to take up uh, new techniques. And there are many of them, because there are many disciplines and many traditions. So um, it's always important to underline the fact that um, what we do uh, uh, has a, a specific characteristic. And pointing to this long tail is, 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 is maybe not very interesting for you, but it's a way that, uh, of talking that uh, people from the hard sciences understand. and. Um, um, the only thing that I, 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 I think uh, we should try to avoid is to uh, uh, allow for uh, the concept of fragmentation to be associated with uh, social sciences and humanities. I think it's much better to, um, to talk about diversity. Um, so we should be proud of being in that long tail um, because it's, uh, uh, it's a direct consequence of our diversity and that's something that makes us interesting rather than something else. Um, then about the impact of the European projects on, uh, on Clarin value proposition. Um, as you know, we have currently five projects running within the Clarin community because in most of them, uh, not only people working for Clarin Eric, but people seconded uh, by either um, uh, partners in those consortia um, that belong to Clarin. Uh, or, to, or by Claire and Eric uh, directly. Uh, so a very diverse group of people, uh, many of you are in the room, contribute to these European projects. Um, and um, so lots of the capacity that we have is going into these projects. Of course, we, we get some interesting budgets for, for that in return, but a lot of our attention and capacity uh, is um, uh, going into work for these projects. So it's good uh, to, to be aware of the ways in which this is uh, um, and strengthening our value proposition. Um, for your information, there is an overview of the progress in, uh, in these uh, projects available on, um, um, in our archive. Um, I think we can also put it on the website. Um, uh, 
but I would like to point to a few things um, uh, that are important uh, and that, uh, that uh, have an impact on, on our value proposition. So first of all, without going uh, into any details, because that is what Dieter did already, but uh, in particular, Clarion Plus helps us to deliver better services that are better integrated and, and better documented. Uh, that's already the case right now, but for, for the coming year, I think the, the work in Clarion Plus will also give us uh, all kinds of possibilities to create better visibility, um, modules for training, uh, screencast for instruction, etc. Overall, the projects will also help us to be better visible in the research infrastructure landscape because there are many events where we invited to uh, to come and tell our story, and, and that's all good for the uh, uh, sustainable future of Clarence, that people know what we are doing, that they know how to find us, and uh, that they understand our contribution to um, Europe's uh, landscape of research infrastructures. As said, sustainability um, is also an important topic. If we, if we want to ensure that the things that we're doing will have a longer lasting uh, future, and not just one year, not just three years, but something that we'd rather, uh, a horizon that we'd rather not specify because it's too far away, um, then we have to make sure that the governance uh, of the ERIC is uh, suited for, uh, for that and that the uh, uh, central infrastructure is um, safeguarded in terms of the uh, financial resources that are needed. Um, so we, the Clarion Plus project gives us the opportunity to uh, uh, to um, analyze the situation and to and to monitor the sustainability and to um, uh, to enhance that um, uh, more closely. And another, um, maybe um, even uh, more, and last but not least, let's call it that way. Last but not least, those all those projects and in particular Partners and, and Clarion Plus. Um, and LTO help us to uh, develop a deeper understanding of the requirements of research communities and, and other communities of use. And uh, of course, Europeana is, is uh, among those lists as well. Um, then there is the uh, impact of um, the European policies on, on our strategy. Um, uh, I think it was already mentioned yesterday that uh, we're hearing uh, about open science policies all the time. Um, so we all have our own uh, favorites there, um, access, uh, source, uh, data, uh, innovation. These are all uh, nouns that can be filled in for the X there. Um, then there is the uh, European Open Science Cloud that you may have heard about, also a uh, quite abstract concept. Um, and normally we like to be a bit more down to earth and, and think about uh, the implications that it has for our work. But it's good to be aware of the fact that all our funders, so the national funders that uh, help the countries to participate in Clarin and the European, um, uh, the European Commission, they all need these concepts to be able to convince uh, um, the politicians to support the budgets that are needed for the kind of work that we do. So it, it may be very high level, uh, but it's very important that we understand the, uh, the mechanisms in, 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 uh, in the world of policy because it's in our interest that we uh, uh, play a role there. Another element that is uh, of direct, uh, um, has a direct impact on, on how we position ourselves uh, is the, um, the S3 roadmap. Uh, as mentioned uh, earlier, um, a new roadmap for S3 um, will be um, published in 2018. And the process towards that roadmap is a selection process where new initiatives uh, um, will be uh, evaluated and assessed for their um, uh, eligibility and, and quality. We are not a new initiative. We are on the roadmap. We have been given the status of landmark, which, which means that um, we are sort of considered to be a mature infrastructure that doesn't have to uh, prove uh, its reasons for existence. But of course, uh, in order to stay on that roadmap and to, to maintain that status, we have to perform. And um, recently, 
uh, first insight in the criteria for that assessment and uh, that we will have to undergo um, uh, were shared with the community. And it's good to be aware of the fact that it's not all about uh, excellence. It's also about um, the, um, the need to demonstrate that not that we have societal impact because, uh, yeah, not to have societal impact because that's what we have. We have heard several stories underlining that, but we have to ensure that we make that visible. The politicians that uh, support us want to know um, whatever we do that uh, helps uh, the European um, uh, agenda uh, to be successful for the societies to be served. So we have to make things visible, more than we did up till now. Um, there will be a lot of attention for the way in which we contribute to the, to the training and education of those who use research infrastructures, and in this case, Claren. Well, we have Daria on board, so um, the think power is there, and we will see how far we can get. But we will also be asked to be um, uh, contributing to the training and education of the new generation of developers. Um, it's very clear that uh, the big and um, ever-growing bigger investments in research infrastructures also requires that there is the human capacity uh, um, to make that a sustainable uh, investment. And one of the ideas is that the existing research infrastructures could contribute to um, this pool of developers that not necessarily have to be domain specialists. Um, and another um, a criterion for being successful in this in this process to be to be selected for uh, another round of um, landmark status is um, to work towards global outreach. Well, that's something that we're already doing and um, I think we're safe there. Um, but it's good to, to bear this in mind that these are also things that uh, we are asked to deliver. Um, maybe not this year, but then very soon. And of course, you could question whether all these uh, requirements uh, make a real, make us, uh, yeah, fulfilling those requirements would make us different. Well, maybe um, um, some of our uh, mechanisms, some, some of the dynamics may change, but as I told you yesterday, uh, without change, you can never remain the same. And if we want, um, so this is a product with a history of almost 100 years. Um, uh, it, look like, it looks like a stable identity, and I think we can do that too. <laughs>